All right, well, everybody, everybody uh, find a seat. We're about ready to get started. So. so we'd just like to start with a, uh, a, a quick prayer, if you don't mind. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. May we just uh, take a moment to pause for, for prayer, if we don't mind bowing our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this, uh, this great day that you have allowed us to live in. We thank you, God, for allowing us to assemble ourselves one more time. We thank you for this festive occasion, O oh God, for which you allowed us to greet one another. And so we ask that you would we invoke your presence with us on this evening. Ask, O oh God, that everything that is said and done will be to your delight. We thank you for the recipients. We thank you, God, for the sponsors. And ask, O oh God, that the evening will be such a wonderful blessing to all of us. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you, God, for the evening. And now, Lord, we just ask you to continue to bless us and keep us. It is our desire and our prayer. In your precious name of your darling son, amen. 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 All right. Well, great. Um, some of you uh, I'm familiar with. For those who don't, uh, Scott, I'm Scott Houston, president of the uh, Greystone Society, and I want to welcome you uh, to the Lukens National Historic District for the sixth annual uh, Rebecca Lukens Award. Uh, I also want to uh, just thank uh, Coatesville Savings Bank for helping make this tonight possible, as well as the board of directors of the Greystone Society, the Rebecca Lukens Award Committee, uh, which includes uh, some of our previous winners who are here tonight. Uh, I just want to take time to recognize all of them. Uh, Mary Sullivan was our first uh, winner. Uh, Jane Davidson is our uh, second recipient, is also here tonight. Uh, Barbara Travellini uh, could not be with us tonight. And Gladys Flamer, a, uh, a renowned uh, community leader, uh, passed away earlier this year. So take a moment for her. And um, we'll do that now. And we would also uh, recognize uh, Nancy Hannum, who is represented by uh, Carol Hamm Davis. So glad you could make it. So uh, the Greystone Society is, uh, you know, uh, is is alive and well and and uh, growing. So it's great. You know, just you know, we're we got the buildings and uh, we're doing more with the buildings. Greystone is is full and, and LTM and Harkham College uh, will hopefully be doing classes there soon. And Terracina is uh, is is a nice house museum. And of course, the office building continues to serve as a uh, a place for uh, nonprofits and foundations to uh, conduct community affairs. And um, you know, the Iron and Steel Museum. We're moving forward with that. It's wonderful because, as you know, we're we're kind of tight on space, and we we would like to have more more space to do uh, larger programs and, and open it up to the community as well for other events and activities. And uh, I'd be happy to talk to anybody about that afterwards. Uh, but it's really our programs that uh, are, are what we're really proud of. Uh, we have the great space, but trying to drive uh, more community uh, education and outreach, uh, not only adult programs, but also opening up to students, Westchester University, the National Park Service, and continuing to build our partnerships and move forward. So. Um, it's really, you know, when we looked at our programs, we wanted to take an opportunity to recognize Rebecca and her achievements and, and to look at her story. And, um, and that's really where the Rebecca Lukens Award idea, uh, you know, came, came out of. And so we're very happy to, uh, you know, look at Rebecca and her story. We have Susanna Brody, storyteller, uh, here tonight who's going to give us a little bit of flavor of, uh, of Rebecca. And, and, and then, you know, the relevancy of today, when you look at the accomplishments of Rebecca, uh, hopefully more in depth, I will not give you the, uh, the full uh, history uh, thing tonight, but it's a fascinating story about uh, a woman, you know, of, of, of prominence in Chester County and the life that she's leading and uh, going down the happy road and she loses her father and her, her son and, and her husband in quick succession and, you know, is, is kind of... Uh, you know, forced into a situation or faced with a situation, not forced into it, uh, you know, where she could either, re you know, retreat back into the, uh, you know, Quaker woman stereotype and uh, the benevolent society, or she can try and, and make it on her own and, uh, and stick it out. And, um, and that's, it's a great, you know, inspiring story. We'll, we'll get a little bit more flavor of that again. I could, I, it's a great story. Um, and, and it inspired us to, to look at people today who have made that same same commitment uh, to a community and to uh, you know a family, and um, it, it it is a great honor to do that during Women's History Month, uh, where 
we, we take an opportunity to pause and reflect, but at the same time, uh, you know, celebrate the, uh, the present and the future. And um, I know that it's warm. I will skip the uh, other four pages of this, uh, this, <laughs> this but, um, you know, I really want to welcome you all tonight uh, to the sixth annual Rebecca Lukens Award uh, as we celebrate uh, Tammy and uh, her uh, accomplishments here. Um, it, it's just an interesting uh, aside is that, you know, I'm sure you, you get it all the time, Tammy, is, you know, oh, you're not, you're not from here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that's, that's always an interesting thing to be faced with. Um, but I think it's a testament to people who aren't from here who really have a love of this place and who, uh, you know, commit their time and energy and, uh, and resources. So um, without, without further ado, what we're going to do is, is hear from Susanna Brody, and then, uh, and then we'll hear from, from Francis. And so, Susanna. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to see all of you here this evening. And I hope that you have the opportunity to take a look at what we have created here. With my brother-in-law Solomon's help, I have built a superior mill, though a plain one. And our character for rolling boilerplate now stands first in the American market. But it was not always thus. When my husband, Dr. Charles Lukens, and I first came here to Brandywine, everything was in dilapidated condition about the house, mill, and farm. Repairs were ruinously expensive, and we bore the whole burden ourselves. <coughs> Dr. Lukens was quite discouraged, and in fact considered abandoning this project and removing his family back to the city of Philadelphia and re-engaging in his medical practice. Those were difficult, difficult times. I often said to my father, it was scarce right that we had so much to do, that the ironwork should have been put in good working order before we arrived. Invariably, his reply was, what you are doing for yourselves will benefit you in the future. For when I am gone, this property will belong to you. About the time that we moved here to Brandywine, it was about the time that our son Charles was born. Dr. Lukens decided to go into the boilerplate business. Now, this was quite risky, for it was a whole new branch of the iron industry. But he had high hopes for its success. Does he know that my husband, Dr. Charles Lukens, was the first iron master in America to successfully roll boilerplate? But those were challenging times. The high costs of repairs, the difficulties we faced in refitting the mill to roll plate. But when I look back on those years, I remember those were times of terrible personal losses. But this is not the occasion this evening to go into those difficulties. Tonight, we are here to honor a woman of courage and determination who has offered a great service to the community of Coatesville. And for that, I will return you to my grandson, five generations removed. <laughs> <laughs> That's super, Susanna. This is such an honor for me to be able to introduce Tammy Kanzler to you as the sixth Rebecca Lukens Award winner because I think the world of her personally and look up to her with such awe professionally. 
She is the key reason the Brandywine Health Foundation was able to build the Brandywine Center because of her many skills and talents, not the least of which is because of her disarming Southern charm. But don't let that charm deceive you. It masks a tough but fair businesswoman, which is why I think this award is so perfect for Tammy. Rebecca would have been so proud. Tammy started her career as a teacher of English and history in elementary and, hist and high school in South Carolina, and she'll tell you that teaching is what she loves most. I think that's why she's so good at working with boards of directors and leading teams. She's excellent at explaining complicated topics and keeping a group focused on the goal at hand. One minute she's calling you to tell you that the county has some housing money available, and the next thing you know, you're at a ribbon cutting for a four-story building, and you think it was your idea. <laughs> in 1972, Tammy married Dale Kanzler, a man who would remain an inspiration to her throughout her life. They decided to move north so that he could accept a job at Lucan Steel, and I love that Tammy has both a Coatesville and a Lucan's connection. Moving north was Tammy's opportunity to explore a new career in business. Now, all of you Mad Men fans, and those of you who began working in the 50s and 60s know that there were very few women in management back then. So Tammy was a real trailblazer in the business world, just like Rebecca. She began working at Merck, Merck, Merck Pharmaceuticals, where she was trained as an industrial engineer. And while there, she became the first female production supervisor in Merck history. That doesn't seem that significant now when women are in so many positions of leadership, but it required great perseverance and determination back then. Soon, Tammy found herself ready to start her own business. She knew she had a passion for real estate, but she wasn't interested in working in what had become a more traditional role for women as a broker or an agent. Instead, she decided to become a real estate developer and started the Kanzler Investment Group. She started small with apartments and developed an interest in affordable apartment, apartments for people in the city of Coatesville. To Tammy, creating safe and clean living environments for an increasingly beleaguered in community was a challenge worth meeting head on. And as she has said, you can take a great house and put it in a bad neighborhood, but it doesn't bring the neighborhood up. It will only serve to bring the rest of the housing down. She knew that once you, you really had to establish economies of scale and build a more significant sized community in order to make, bring the neighborhood up significantly. <coughs> That's exactly what she did with the North 2nd Avenue redevelopment project in Coatesville where her offices are still located and her firm created their 62 beautiful housing units for senior citizens just 15 years ago. From there, her company built two more very successful complexes, Penn's Crossing Townhomes, down by the tennis courts, and the Brandywine Center. It was that last project that gave me the opportunity to see what a talented businesswoman Tammy Kanzler is. She led us through the development of the concept of a health and housing center. She pulled together a top-notch design, um, and I see Bruce Weinsteiger and uh, Margaret and Carol from uh, Architectural Concepts are here, right there on the stairwell, um, as well as a great construction team. Pete Egan is here um, with um, his construction manager, Ron Steiger, and his son who's joining the business, which is great. And I think it's such a te testament to Tammy that they're here with us this, th this evening. She also secured all the properties uh, to create the building site that involved negotiating with nine owners, any of wh whom could have stopped the project. But again, going back to her Southern charm, uh, she made it all happen. She marketed the project to elected officials like Carol Aschel and funders and communicated effectively with foundation staff and board members whose involvement and approval was needed to move forward. Tammy's reputation was critical to securing financing. So many have faith in her personally and know they can trust that her business decisions are made with integrity. Despite the stress of caring for her husband Dale for 16 years as he battled Parkinson's disease and losing her son just six years before, she never showed the strain and always made her clients and the residents of her Second Avenue facility feel that we were her priority. It's been almost a year since Dale passed away, and I'm so sorry that he couldn't be with us here today because he was her biggest fan and so, so proud of her accomplishments. I particularly admire that Tammy's business is ultimately about building a stronger community and helping people live better lives. 
whether it's senior citizens living safely with dignity at Second Avenue or the Brandywine Center, whether it's hel helping people become first-time home buyers at Penn's Crossing, or bringing health providers together at the Brandywine Center, she's made an immeasurable difference in the Coatesville community, just like Rebecca. Tammy? Francis, thank you for those very kind words. You mentioned my involvement in the Brandywine Center, and I want to add my appreciation to you and to the board members of the Brandywine Health Foundation who worked so hard to make the Brandywine Center a reality. You were the driving force behind the idea. You supported it, you advocated for it, and you provided the resources that we needed to get it completed. So thank you all for your efforts in providing a medical and housing facility that has meant so much to the citizens of Coatesville and to Chester County. The Rebecca Lukens Award touches me both professionally and personally. As most of you are aware, my husband Dale worked at Luke and Steel for over 17 years. He loved this company, and he loved the people who worked here. Both Dale and I admired Re Rebecca Lukens and her resolve to build Luke and Steel into a successful enterprise. At a time in our country's history when women were rarely seen in leadership positions in industry, she had the unique ability to grow a new company and to raise her family as a single parent after her husband, Dr. Char Charles Lukens, died in 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 1825. It was a daunting task and one that serves as a model not only for women today, but for all of us, for both men and women. I am optimistic that Coatesville, that she helped Cree, create is entering a new phase of revitalization and renewal. There are several large projects which could be the catalyst to encourage more development and investment in the Coatesville area. The Marriott Hotel, which you probably passed on your way in, will open this spring. The train station will be renovated to accommodate both Amtrak and SEPTA travelers and the site of the new train station will be rebuilt in a transit-friendly neighborhood. The Greystone Society and the Houston Foundation are in the planning stages for a National Iron and Steel Heritage Museum that will be constructed only a few hundred yards from this site, and it will house, among other artifacts, the steel trees that once stood at the Twin Towers in New York City. Those trees, which were made at the Luke and Steel Company in 1968 and 1969 and then shipped to the World Trade Center, were among the few remaining structures that withstood the horrific event of September the 11th. Those trees have now come home to Coatesville. And they will stand not only in honor of the victims of that terrible tragedy, but also as a tribute to the resilience and the tenacity of the American people. Finally, Coatesville is blessed with many talented and committed citizens and with organizations such as the Brandywine Health Foundation, the Greystone Society, and the Houston Foundation, all of which are dedicated to Coatesville's rebirth and success. Through their collaborative efforts, I would say that Coatesville's future is bright and assured. In closing, thank you again for your kindness in allowing me to share this award with so many of you in this audience who've done so much to move our community forward. Thank you. In, in uh, recognition of the, uh, the award, uh, we do present a uh, certificate. 
<laughs> we, do, uh, we do present a, a certificate uh, recognizing you as the uh, Rebecca Lukens Award winner. Thank you. So, Thank congratulations. You very much. And also then, yeah. <laughs> we also, uh, if you wouldn't mind helping me, this is the, uh, the award that we uh, put on the model of Rebecca's Mill, which is it located at, here in the front lobby of Rebecca's Mill and her operation and her business. So uh, this plaque uh, will stay with the mill uh, no matter where it goes in the museum. Uh, but uh, we would like you to help uh, unveil the, the, uh, this year's award. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Tighter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good friends now. Yeah. That's it right here. All right, um, at this time then um, we would like to uh, to you know try and keep this short we have uh, political uh, presentations so uh, you know we know how that can go um, <laughs> it is an election year but uh, I think that all the, the everybody here tonight uh, it is a great list um, uh, of, of presentations, which again is a, an attribute to Tammy and her uh, effective work here. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Jim Ziegler as our new executive director, and he's been coordinating with us the, uh, the, the lineup for the uh, government presentations. So thank you very much. Jim. Uh, first, we'll start with the city of Coatesville, and tonight we have uh, Gary Rawlings, uh, our new city council manager. Thank you. I'm standing in tonight for uh, City Council President Ed Simpson, who had a prior engagement. I couldn't have come tonight, but I did want to, on behalf of the City Council, present Ms. Kanzler with our proclamation. And uh, if you don't mind, I could read it. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, here it is for you. Um, my eyes aren't so good anymore, so I'm going to try and read it <laughs> under this light over here. <clears throat> Bear with me, please. <laughs> Uh, whereas the city of Coatesville recognizes people who make an impact on and play a role in the lives of Coatesville residents, and whereas Tamara Kanzler, president of Kanzler Investment Group, has been an active investor in the Coatesville real estate and has been headquartered in Coatesville, Pennsylvania since 1986, and whereas Ms. Kanzler developed the North 2nd Avenue redevelopment project in Coatesville when her firm created 62 beautiful housing units for senior citizens in 1997, and in 2002 received the Greystone Society and Chester County Historical Commission's Award for the restoration of the Steel City Senior Housing Building in Coatesville. And whereas Ms. Kanzler developed Penn Crossing, which consisted of 78 townhouses located in the east end of Coatesville. And whereas Ms. Kanzler developed the Brandywine Health and Housing Center. The center provides health care services, dental care, and behavioral health for citizens and residents throughout the county and beyond and houses 24 affordable apartments for senior citizens. And whereas Ms. Kanzler is active in community service and committed to providing opportunities for home ownership to low-income families, now therefore be it proclaimed that the City of Council of the City of Coatesville recognizes and salutes to Mayor Kanzler for her selfless, faithful dedication and service to the lives of the citizens of the Coatesville community. Signed, enacted the 22nd day of March, 2012. Thank you very much. Nice, nice, nice uh, next, I believe we have a representative from the county commissioners, uh, Commissioner Kazana. Um, I'm here today on behalf of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Farrell wasn't able to make it, and I believe Commissioner Costello was here earlier. Um, uh, to present a citation recognizing uh, Tammy for receiving this award. You know, I, I've had the good fortune or had the good fortune to serve on a board with Tammy for, uh, for four years. And when I look at these words, resilience, loyalty, caring, practicality, insightfulness, tenacity, oh boy, resourcefulness. <laughs> I don't need the light, but I need the glasses and, <laughs> and, and patience. I'm good now. Um, I can't help but, um, but say that 
as I've come to know you, I think that all of those words describe you so very, very well. So on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we'd like to congratulate you. Thank you for your service, not just to the Coatesville community, but to all of Chester County. And next, I think we have uh, Representative Hennessy. Thank you. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I thought you'd all fall asleep. <laughs> it's a pleasure for me to be here on behalf of the House of Representatives uh, and really the, the state government, uh, Governor Corbett. And uh, although I don't want to steal our Secretary of State for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Carol Angel's comments. Uh, will probably follow mine. Uh, but it is a thrill for me to be here for Tammy Kanzler. Uh, I remember back in the mid-90s, I was just getting started in this job. Somebody came to me and said, sign on to this project for Tammy Kanzler, you know. And I said, well, who's Tammy Kanzler? Sorry about <laughs> And why should I sign on to it? And uh, they said, she's a wonderful person, and she's going to get it done. It's a great project. She's a person who can see it through and get it done. Uh, so I signed on to it, and it was, it was a tax credit application, as I recall. Um, and that was the first of several successful projects that she's handled for, for the uh, city. Uh, and quite frankly, every city in, in the uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania should be blessed with someone like a Tammy Kessler, who can actually take projects and start them up, see them through, you know, draw up the game plan and get, it to get the, uh, the ball across the goal line. She's done that. She's done it so well in the 2nd Avenue project, in Penn's Crossing, and in the Brandywine Health Center, as we've heard. Uh, like I said, every city, should, every, should, every city should have one. If we could clone you, we would. <laughs> <coughs> I have a citation for you. I won't bore you with trying to, to read through it all, uh, but it does recognize the contributions you've made and the importance you, you, are, the, the importance you have in the Coastal community for what you've done and what you've accomplished over the course of a, a relatively short second uh, career uh, mm -hmm. in terms of developing property. So thank you very much, much for what you've done. Uh, my direction is to, uh, to deliver this on behalf of Kurt Schroeder and myself, uh, and I'm happy to do that this evening. Um, just thank you very much, Tammy, for what you've accomplished. Thank you. And next we'll hear from Secretary of State Achel. It is an extraordinary privilege for me to be here, Tammy, to recognize uh, your accomplishments here in Coatesville and throughout your life on behalf of uh, the Governor of Pennsylvania. Uh, it seems appropriate uh, in, in that Tammy is being recognized with the Rebecca Lukens Award because Chester County is the home of strong women leaders. And you need to only look at, at what has happened all across Chester County. Rebecca Lukens may have started it, uh, but we followed her example in every corner of Chester County and uh, I would say our county leads uh, and women are the leaders. Uh, on behalf of uh, Governor Corbett, uh, it gives, it, dear Tammy, it gives me great pleasure to join with the Greystone Society, your family, friends, to congratulate you on being uh, honored with Rebecca Lukens Award. It goes through a long list of your many accomplishments. As governor, and on behalf of all Pennsylvanians, I am honored to take this opportunity to extend my admiration and gratitude <coughs> for all that you have done for your community and our Commonwealth. Congratulations on your recognition and best wishes for great success in your future endeavors. Signed, Tom Corbett, Governor. And I believe we have Ed Schmidt representing uh, U.S. Representative Gerlach. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. Tammy, congratulations to you. On behalf of Congressman Jim Gerlach, thank you so much for having me here tonight to present what we have as an extension of remarks. These remarks congratulate Tammy on her many accomplishments and will be placed in the congressional record as of today, March 22nd. Congratulations to you. Many, many more years. Thank you so much.
Well, this, this concludes the, uh, the formal presentation that we have, but we always do uh, you know, want to have an opportunity. If one or two people want to come up and say anything, that would be great. But I just want to, uh, uh, yeah, Paul? Yeah, come on, feel, feel free. <laughs> I'm going to take you back. Be, be kind. <laughs> I'm going to take you back to the 80s when I was on city council and I was president. And I came to you to ask you to direct our council on how we could prepare the city to make small companies sales stores in the city. You developed, if I'm not mistaken, from 2nd Avenue to 3rd on the south side. We went across the street, there was the store on the corner, which is now a laundromat, and the parking lot across on the east side, and we were going to build buildings there, we were going to put apartments, on top of the stores and we went into the casino of this, Mr. Houston's house and we went uh, there one Saturday morning one Saturday after all day and you presented a presentation to us and out of that <laughs> we bought a bar <laughs> on 2nd Avenue <laughs> and it was dilapidated. The roof was falling in, there were cats all over the place, both live and dead and we started cleaning that place out and then the Historical Society of Chester County told us that we had to put a certain roof on top of this barn. <laughs> that, was that, that was your first song. The other plans fell apart, but you continued to do things. And, you know, Second Avenue, all of a sudden, you bought Fleetwood Street, made the ho uh, houses into rental apartments, uh, housing, and you did so many things for the, that they don't recognize this place. <laughs> they don't think about those times. So I just wanted to bring them to the attendance of everybody. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's 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 the great thing about historical societies is because a lot of things happen before people's times. So. Um, <laughs> A lot happened before my time when I, you know, got into town. But uh, this is great. I, I do uh, have one other uh, important uh, notice here is uh, Debbie Miller uh, wants to speak for Kurt Schroeder. And uh, she uh, is a good friend of Tammy's, so. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. On behalf of Representative Kurt Schroeder in the state of Pennsylvania, I am honored to have a part in presenting this citation to Tamara Kanzler as a recipient of the 2012 Rebecca Lukens Award and in recognition of her dedication to the people of Coatesville. As a personal friend, I can say that TME is integrity personified. I would like to add that to know Tammy is to know the most generous and loving woman with a kind and generous spirit and the heart of a lion. How fortunate for all of us that Tammy and Dale left South Carolina to make Pennsylvania their home. We have our own steel magnolia right oh. here in Chesapeake. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, is, that is a that's a great ending. I just want to, yeah. you know, we uh, we planted those trees just for you. Um, yeah, it's a great, we have a great uh, southern uh, connection as well. My great-grandmother, uh, dad's here, his, uh, his grandmother was from Savannah, and, uh, and we have the, the trees are in full bloom. So, you know, please 
you know, grab something to drink, get something to eat, get some fresh air. Uh, we really appreciate you coming tonight. And please, you know, take two minutes to thank Tammy for what she's done for us um, because this, this ceremony has been great, family style, bring everybody here. Um, again, uh, Tammy, we just really thank, uh, thank you for what you've done for Coatesville. Thank so thank you, you again. Mm -hmm.